Chapter 9, The Polish Colossus. This is my summary of Absolute Power by Paul Collins. To begin with, there was a conclave on the 25th of August of 1978. Albino Luciani, the Patriarch of Venice, became Pope John Paul. He had lots of pastoral experience and descended from the working class of Northern Italy. He had a lot of charm, was warm, and often laughed about things. Impact. He replaced the papal coronation ceremony with mass at St. Peter's, and he also removed the pompous crowning of the triple tiara and got rid of the sedia gestatoria, or the portable chair, which was carried by six men. Unfortunately, he died 33 days in office, and on the 28th of September, 1978, it was so sudden that no autopsy was conducted, hence the cause of his death was unknown. In October of 1978, another conclave was held, and the 58-year-old Polish Cardinal Karol Wojtyla of Krakow became Pope John Paul II. Here's a context of Poland. A majority of Poles were Catholic Slav, whose nation didn't exist for 125 years due to Russian, Prussian, and Austrian control. It finally returned in 1918, and again after the Second World War in 1945. Polish cultural identity was separated from the political nation-state. Karol studied at Jagiellonian University to study Polish literature and language. He grew up through German occupation of Poland and was part of the underground network of students since all education was closed by the Nazis. He worked as a laborer in a quarry and resumed his studies after the Second World War, studying theology, and by 1946 he became ordained. He was inspired by the likes of Max Scheller's ethical viewpoint on the intuition of the heart, being the source of eternal and absolute morals. He also lectured theological ethics at Krakow Seminary in 1953. He became professor of ethics at Lublin's Catholic University. On the 4th of July 1958, he was ordained as an auxiliary bishop, and later he became Archbishop of Krakow on the 13th of January 1964. By 1967, he was made a cardinal. He wrote a number of books like Love and Responsibility in 1962, talking about motherhood and how a woman's moral and biological drive was tied strongly to the maternal role, and that contraception sexualized and degraded women. He also wrote A Sober I Sin, Person and Act, 1967. In Vatican II, he wrote of his own perspective of the council in his book You Podstor Od Naui, Foundations of Renewal, 1972, which focused on the experience of the council, but he didn't write much about the debates that went in the council. It was not popular as there hadn't been that much interest in the council in Poland. He favored the council's interpretation of religious liberty since it ran in opposition to the atheistic communist state. In March of 1967, the sign of contradiction was a book written to Pope Paul VI about Gordium et Spee's emphasis on the connection between the church and the modern world. Paul Collins believed that the Polish church suffered against Nazism and communism, which played a huge part in the formation of Pope John Paul II's beliefs. And he had a pessimistic view of modernity, stating that despite increasing technology and knowledge, humanity's philosophy and ethics still lack. On the 16th of October 1978, Carroll was elected to become Pope, and he announced that his aim was to implement what the Vatican II Council decrees. In 1984, Pope John Paul II wrote the text Salvifici Dolores, Slavic Suffering, which referenced Isaiah chapter 42 to 53 on the seven songs in which Pope John Paul II recognizes Christ to be the suffering servant who sacrificed his life for salvation, and that the church undergoes that same suffering. He had his own views of Vatican II and was like a populist evangelist, desiring big crowds and using the liturgy that was encultured or adapted to the local church, even before consulting the local bishops. He also allowed for the development of new religious organizations devoted to evangelism of ex-Catholics like Opus Dei, Communion and Liberation, Legionnaires of Christ, and neo catechumenal Way, etc. These organizations, according to Paul Collins, were not suited for the modern world, as they would cause individuals to isolate themselves from the local parish, living in rigid communities, and the Pope sponsored all of this. Assassination attempt. Pope John Paul II believed that the Virgin Mary intervened in his assassination attempt, since it was on the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima on the 13th of May 1981. Mehmet Ali Agkar was a Turkish assassin in the midst of a complicated scheme involving the Bulgarian intelligence agencies, CIA, and KGB. The Pope was shot three times with a brown 9mm semi-automatic pistol, which hit the Pope's abdomen and caused a great loss of blood near his colon. Despite the serious wound, the Pope survived this, and he interpreted it to be a miracle from Fatima. Meanwhile, in communist Poland, Pope John Paul II visited Poland on June of 1979. Two million attended his mass in Krakow, and he claimed to manifest European unity, being a Slavic Pope. On August of 1980, there was economic stagnation in Poland, which caused food prices to rise and led to strikes. Leonid Brezhnev, the leader of the Soviet Union, saw the strikes as counter-revolutionary and a defense coalition between the clergy, academia, and the workers. Poland gave in to the demands of the strikes, causing outrage in Moscow and the Soviet world. There was a crackdown on any solidarity for this movement, including the church, by December. Fearing Soviet invasion of Poland in 1981, this solidarity of clergy, academics, and workers would exercise power through strikes, and General Ruzczech Jaruzelski declared martial law and arrested leaders of the solidarity movement. During this time, the Pope had opened the lines of communications with Moscow and Jaruzelski through the Secretary of State Cardinal Agostino Casaroli. This allowed the Pope to mediate communication. On the 7th of June 1982, President Reagan supported the Solidarity movement and was willing to give intelligence about Poland to the Pope, but the Pope declined, stating that if the Soviets invaded, he would return to be with his people in Poland. The Pope went to Poland again in 1987, where Gorbachev supported Glasnost, openness and transparency. But this policy had not yet reached Poland. The Polish secret society, SB, killed the priest Władysław Topolusko, a supporter of solidarity and was opposed to the communist government. This murder led to countrywide 
protests, and the Pope went to visit Vladislaw's grave, condemning the evils of atheism. In 1988, Glasnost came to Poland, but food prices were still increasing, which fueled more protests. And then by November of 1989, the Berlin Wall collapsed and the Soviet bloc dissolved, turning Poland into a free and democratic country. In June of 1991, the Pope returned to Poland, finding it a consumeristic society, which was indifferent to the church, and as a result, the Pope denounced secularism in his home country. This was not received well in Poland, however. Pope John Paul II made 104 international trips, visiting 129 countries, and having at least four trips per year over the course of his 26-year papacy. He also created World Youth Days, starting first in Rome in 1986, and it gathered vast crowds to strengthen the faith and unity of the local church. He wrote the encyclical Redemptor Hominis in 1979, whereby it stated that human freedom is brought by Christ, and that religious freedom and religious conscience is a human right, promoting social work and denouncing the atheistic state. Another encyclical included Laborum Exigence in 1981, which supported work as a way of participating in God's creation. It defended property rights and ownership, as well as called for family wages so that women can take care of the family. Solicitudo Re Socialis, 1987. This states the impact of industrialization, which has damaged the environment with pollution, as well as working class. Santissimus Annus, 1991. This denounced free market capitalism for contributing to the growing inequality between the rich and the poor. Evangelium Vitae, 1995. This encyclical talked about the growing world population, which by then approached 5.7 billion that year. The state had the right to intervene, but providing it respected the family and religious conscience of Catholics against and condemning the use of contraception, abortion, and sterilization. Veritatis Splendor, 1993. This was an encyclical that denounced moral relativism in the West and theologically dissident views that were believed to have resulted from improper understanding of the freedom of conscience, which from the perspective of the Pope meant to choose the moral law laid out by the magisterium. Apostolos Suos, on the 21st of May, 1998, was an apostolic letter that stated, the conference of bishops cannot declare its teaching to be doctrine unless approved unanimously and by the papacy. Pope John Paul II appointed Ratzinger, who would later become Pope Benedict XVI, to be prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, the CDF. And Ratzinger argued that the right to teach belonged to the papacy and not to any one bishop, let alone a collegality of bishops. Pope John Paul II, influenced by the need for a united front to stand against communism, disliked dissident views within the church. Schools of theology that were denounced included liberation theology in South America, since it was accused of appropriating Marxist ideas. Mary and Human Liberation, 1990, was a book by Sri Lankan theologian Father Tisa Balasaraya, who desired to integrate the faith with Asian culture and was denounced and critiqued by the CDF. The organization demanded a personal profession of faith, which he refused to go to and was subsequently excommunicated by January of 1997. In 1997, Towards a Christian Theology of Religious Pluralism was published by Jesuit Jacqui Dupis, who was subsequently denounced for being ambiguous by the CDF, since it advocated for the idea of religious pluralism. The CDF stated that, however, truth only was found in Jesus Christ, and this stirred up controversy between Ratzinger and Cardinal F. Kony, who came to Dupis's defense. Pope John Paul II in Judaism. Pope John Paul II visited the site of Auschwitz, Birkenau. He held a mass on the 7th of June, 1979, stating that, I come and I kneel on this Golgotha of the modern world. He denounced any form of anti-Semitism after personal experiences of the Holocaust, and stated that it had no theological or religious basis. Ecumenism, ut unum sint, that they may be one, 1995. This was a text that focused on Petrine ministry, whereby the role of the Pope was to strive for Christian unity, acknowledging that the truth is found in the Catholic and other churches. Instead of opting for primacy, the Pope relied on keeping dialogue with other denominations through ecumenism. He held an interfaith conference in Assisi in 1986, 1993, and 2002. Theology of the Body. Pope John Paul II created this idea to challenge the sexual revolution, stating in a number of public lectures between 1979 to 1984. He stated that people confuse love with using bodies of others for selfish pleasure. Despite this, Paul Collins states that he didn't do much for victims of sexual abuse, failing to respond to incidents such as Machiao de Galato of the Legionnaires of Christ, who was a sexual predator. Pope John Paul II ordained 482 people to become saints, many of whom were martyrs from China, Korea, Spain, and Mexico. The death of Pope John Paul II. The Vatican reported that the Pope had Parkinson's in 2003. In August of 2004, he struggled through Mass in Lord's Pilgrimage in France, and by Holy Week of 2005, he died peacefully on the 2nd of April. He had the largest funeral in history, with 2.6 million people attending, including three crown princes, 74 presidents and prime ministers, and 10 kings and queens as well as the news media. Pope John Paul II held the second longest papacy in history. So in summary, we looked at Pope John Paul II, his early life through uh, in experiencing Nazi occupation, his affirmation of the decrees made in the Vatican II Council. We also looked at how he played an instrumental part in the eventual downfall of communism in not just Poland but in the rest of the Eastern Bloc due to his uh, open support for the Solidarity Movement. We also looked at his assassination attempt interpreted to be from a divine source as well as his ideas in his various encyclicals about human liberty, freedom for religion, bodily theology, and yeah, join me next time whereby I talk about the reign of Pope Benedict XVI. And yeah, thanks for watching.